What's up guys, it's Instinct here and today I'll be showing you guys my top 5 favorite plugins for Cinema 40. I'll also show you guys how to use the plugin, so if you guys find this tutorial helpful, please make sure to drop a comment, like, and subscribe. With all that being said, let's get into the video. Coming at number 5 on my list is Ivy Grower. Now what Ivy Grower does is you can get something like for example a text. Uh, let me just make this all caps real quick and choose let's say Gotham Black for a font uh, right there and maybe increase the depth a little bit. Alright so now what Ivy Grower will do is you go ahead and you go to plugins go ahead and you go to ivy grow which is right here now you click on this uh little leaf right here and you'll see these little dots so once you see these dots you can basically click anywhere on the text but you have to make sure your text is selected but you can mess around with all these settings. I'm not going to show you guys like the settings I use because honestly I don't really use this plugin that much. But there's all a bunch of settings you can customize. So once you have you know your settings down and everything, what you want to do is go ahead and click on the text and it'll like select the text or you can really use Ivy Grow on anything but for this example I'll be using it on text. And then what you guys want to do is go ahead and double click where you want the uh, ivy to start growing. So it'll be like a bunch of like leaves that will like grow off like the text. So uh, generally I'm going to use alt to change the camera angle. So I think it would look good like if we're on the top of the text like kind of like hanging off. So I'm going to use it like on the top of the T kind of like right here. And go ahead and double click and it'll make a point. Now, it might be a different color, I have changed it to blue, but once you have made your point, go ahead and click this little leaf right here, and go ahead and click Grow Ivy. Now I'll start to grow the ivy out, and then once you want it to stop growing, click Stop Growing, and go to Birth, click Give Birth, and this will make your ivy. Now obviously this is bad because I didn't really ch change the settings or anything. But that's just generally how to use Ivy Grower. And I'm not really that good at using it. In fact, I don't really find this plugin useful. So that is why it is coming at the number 5 spot. Alright, so I'm just going to delete this and get into the fourth plugin. So coming at number 4 on this list is Reaper. Now, Reaper is actually a pretty good plugin. I really like this plugin. Uh, to use Reaper, all you have to do is go ahead and get a spline so hold down on this and go to sketch and then just draw a bunch of splines all like around kind of like that you know just get a bunch of splines obviously it's going to look bad because i'm just i'm not really you know making anything but once you have your splines you go ahead click plugins and go to reaper 2.0 it it used to be called reaper x but uh, once you have your reaper, go ahead and drag the spline into it and it will make this rope effect. So now what you guys can do is go ahead and click on reaper and uh, mess with the settings. So usually coils I have around to like 10 or something. Strands, let's go with like one strand. And then the radius is just, you know, the radius. And then the distance is kind of like, like, you know, like, like the distance on the splines. So. Usually what I would do is I'd like get something like that and then get a bunch of landscapes and put it back kind of like that and make it look like it's coming out of the landscapes. Make this smaller maybe, something like that. And yeah, so this is basically how you use Reaper X. So let's get into my third plugin. My third favorite plugin uh, for Cinema 4D is Nitro Blast. Now to use Nitro Blast, it's a little bit more complex than the others, but to use Nitro Blast, all you guys have to do is select the text. Now this will actually work, for example, on a cube or really any like 3D extruded object. So what you guys want to do is make sure you're selected on your text or whatever you're doing in Nitro Blast and go to Plugins. 
go to Nitro Blast and go to Nitro Blast main. From here, you can type in your pieces. So, for example, I'm just going to type in like 15 and then choose like the quality. Um, I'm just going to leave it on medium. And go ahead and click fracture. Alright, so once it's done with fracturing, you're going to see this plus button here and it basically has all the Nitro Blasted layers. So, what you can do is replace the uh, materials. And to do this real quick, I'm just going to use like. For example, this material. Actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna replace the materials at all. But you can replace your materials, your own materials on there to like make it actually look a lot better. Now, once you have your nitroblasted pieces, your layers here, what you guys want to do is create a fracture. So to do that, go to MoGraph and click fracture, which is right here. And then what you guys want to do is click the top piece, hold shift, and click the bottom piece. And go ahead, drag it into fracture. Make sure the arrow is pointing down, and drop it, and it will put all the pieces into fracture. And do this with all the layers. But I'm just gonna do this once more to save time. Hold, click the top one, hold shift, click the bottom one once again. It will select all the pieces. Go ahead and drag it into fracture, and make sure the arrow is down. Pretty simple. Now go ahead and click on fracture. Make sure you are selected on fracture. Go to MoGraph. Go to Effector, click Random, and it will explode the text, or whatever your object is. Now drag the like the strength down to like something like maybe 10, and you can see what this does. And let's go ahead and pre-render this out, and see what it does. So, like I said, it just simply cracks the uh, material, and makes it like explode. It basically cracks the text and makes it explode. So. That is Nitro Blast, and that is how to use Nitro Blast. Alright, now coming in at my second favorite plugin for Cinema 4D is Griebler. So I'm actually going to make some new text here, just to show you guys what Griebler is all about. Actually, I'm not going to make some text, I'm actually going to use this on uh, whatever this is called, tutorials or whatever, however, however it's pronounced. Uh, so grab this and really like you can adjust it like rotate it if you want I'm gonna do something like that maybe really doesn't matter go ahead and go to plugins and go ahead and click Griebler once you have Griebler all you have to do is drag Tauros onto Griebler and make sure the arrow is pointing down and then you get this nice effect and you can uh, mess with the settings here so go to base and then you can you know increase like it's and basically play around with the settings. I really like Griebler. It's it, you can get some amazing things with Griebler. And yeah, so this is why Griebler is my second favorite plugin. It's just a really nice plugin to use. You can get this funky kind of effect and everything. So moving on to my favorite plugin in Cinema 4D is gotta be Umami. This plugin is just so good go ahead and click you mommy you will get this like tentacle spline thing and all you have to do is get a circle or also a cogwheel works really good I'm gonna use a cogwheel actually and scale this down a ton so like something like that and go ahead and click you mommy go ahead and click mesh drive the cogwheel right into the mesh right here drop it boom there you go have your umami. Now I just absolutely love this effect here. It looks really nice when you put it in your renders or any design you have. Uh, Cogwheel actually makes the umami like have these like ridges. So if I go ahead and pre-render this out, you can kind of see it's gonna take a little bit. That's the only downside to umami is that it's gonna take a little bit to render but actually if you use a circle instead of a cog wheel it won't take that long to render it's just taking longer because I'm using a cog wheel but it is definitely worth it because the detail is very very good a lot of detail and it looks super clean alright so it has finished rendering that took a little bit but you get the point it is super duper clean if you use a cogwheel, but even if you use, like for example, a circle, 
it's not going to take that long. So if I use like a circle and I drag it into mesh, and then lower the uh, like scale it down quite a bit. Go ahead, scale the circle down to something like that, and you can go ahead and render this out. And it's not going to take nearly as long as it took the uh, cog wheel to render out because there's just so much more detail in the cog wheel. So this is Umami, and also you can mess with the uh, splines, increased in number of segments, so like how long the splines are, or the number of splines, so you can have something insane, like like a lot of splines, like that just like looks super, super cool in my opinion, it just, yeah, so this is Umami, and also, I forget to mention, you can mess around with like, it's going to be super duper laggy, because the amount of splines I have, I'm going to lower that to like 30 or something 20 and you can also change like the like the rotation of it and get some like really cool looking uh, like effects kind of something like that umami just very very cool plugin and it is useful in a lot of situations now the reason umami is better than reaper x is well because it is just randomized and it is a lot faster because, you know, Reaper X, you gotta do manually, and Umami, you can kinda just do it all at once. And it's just more randomized, and just looks better. So, that is it. That is my top 5 favorite plugins for Cinema 4D. If you guys did like this video, guys, please make sure to drop a comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace. I have been